What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the show. Today's guest is Ash Shukla. He's a holistic financial business consultant, and when I first got approached by him to do this interview, I was a little skeptical, to be honest with you. I really didn't understand how money had anything to do with mental health. And I know that sounds a little naive right now, but you just have to understand when I'm going through guests, I'm really trying to figure out how they can do the best for my audience, what my audience can get out of them. But as I started watching some of Ash's YouTube videos, starting reading into them a little bit, I realized that mental health is just such a complicated thing that it goes across different areas, which is kind of funny because I have been talking a lot about being holistic about this mental health approach yet I really didn't think about involving the financial side of it when I started talking to Ash it became very very clear to me that he was all about mental health spiritual health physical health as well as how to incorporate them into the financial side of things Ash has some great advice so if you do want to check out his books sell like crazy and financial chakras I did leave a link in the description box down below but you can also check out Ash on LinkedIn Pinterest his YouTube channel Instagram and his websites, ashukla.com and financialchakras.com. Overall, this was a great learning experience. I really got to learn a lot about the Hindu religion, as well as how Ash really brings everything together. Because as we know, if we leave things as hypotheses, then we never really get into the practice part of it. But all of what Ash says is very practical in real life. And so I was very happy to have him on. So from now on, I think I'm going to be a little bit more open-minded to having different guests on with different opinions about the world as well. So without going on a rant as I usually do, let's get straight into the video. What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the Mental Health Chats. I am Lucky, or Mental Health Casual, and today I have a very special guest, and I say that a lot, but in this case, this was a, an interview that was, I was trying to figure out, okay, well, if, you know, if I do have this person on, how is this going to affect my audience, you know, because I'm all about mental health, um, that's kind of my main focus, um, and this person is is, uh, is a holistic financial business um, consultant, and uh you know, I, I was trying to figure out, well, how does, what does money have to do with mental health? And I started thinking about, you know, some of the lowest parts of my life were when I was extremely poor, I couldn't buy, you know, certain things. Um, and even when, you know, even on the other opposite side of the spectrum, when I did have enough money, I was spending it in excess of, of, of substances that I didn't need in my body, um, a lot of things. And so having somebody actually talk about um, things from a financial side is actually as holistic as it gets, because this person... Um, does involve everything, the spirituality side of it, just every every aspect um, to the money, and it really takes out, um, it really starts to put the people back into the money and not separating the two. So, Ash, thank you again for doing this interview, and you have a very interesting story. So, for the people, um, for the people in my audience that maybe have not heard of you, could you kind of talk about your upbringing? Because I know you're not originally from America. Absolutely, my friend. Thank you so much, Lucky. I really appreciate this, my friend. First of all, really appreciate you. You know, I, I want to tell you I, how thankful I am of you and, of course, your audience. And I want to tell them that I love you guys. You know, a, a whoever is listening, and I want I want to let you know right up front. So, you know, my friends, listen, I came, my name is Ash Shukla. I came here from India in 1989 with $20 and no English. I ran into, I was studying computer science and I ran into financial services as a uh, as an accident. And I wasn't bad, I was pathetic when I got started. I was so bad that I had to blackmail my dad through my mom to get my first sale. And you know, I, I had to take my financial exam several times to pass it. But eventually I passed them all and I became a financial advisor. I was a, a initially uh, as an independent contractor, then I went to work for banks and I was managing over $300 million in assets. And eventually I started my own company, built that up to be successful. And then, you know, I became a keynote speaker for Congressman Stanley Hoyer, Congressman Cummings, and several other congressmen uh, who were putting on events and things of that nature. And I had a lot of fun with that. I, I have helped over 5,000 businesses, and I uh, personally have received a congressional honor for my work. Uh, I wrote a book called Sell Like Crazy, which became an Amazon bestseller. And my brand new book that's coming out is called Financial chakras and um and I'm, I'm creating a movement right now between the wellness and the holistic world and the financial world to really help people do better financially and i believe that 
if you are going to uh, do well, you know, let's do well, you know, uh, in all aspects of life and be aligned in a proper manner. And that is my belief. And I would love to see how I can help any of your guests in, in, in some way, shape or form lucky. Yeah, that's such an important thing because I feel like when we're looking at money, at least nowadays, and maybe I don't know if this is uh, specific to my generation, generations going forward, is we kind of get this idea that money is the enemy. Money corrupts people. Money does this. Money does that. Um, but I remember uh, at my, my father's funeral, I remember my uncle um, giving a sermon, and I remember him saying, you know, money without God, or in, if you don't believe in God, whatever kind of, uh, without morals, without any, any type of language that you use, it is useless. And you kind of, uh, you kind of give off that, that, uh, that vibe, especially in your videos, when you talk about it, including money in the, the overall relationship. Now you talk a lot about, uh, chakras. Could you kind of explain, you know, maybe like a, a spark notes of it, um, kind of explain the, the chakra system and how you incorporated that into fin finances? Yeah. So basically those of you who don't know chakra system, the way it works, Lucky, is that there are seven main, so chakra, is, the word itself, you know, initially it was written up in, uh, between 1800 to 1100 BC in, um, in the oldest text called the Vedas back in India. Then the word itself. So if you were to take a look at it, what interesting fact about this is that, you know, it was, it, that meant that I did some math on this and I found out that it, it, it chakras were written up, in, you know, almost uh, 1 million, 395,000 days ago, and, you know, and some, some more days. Okay. But like that's approximate number. So that was very interesting when I found out, but anyway, so that being said, right? So this word chakra means a wheel. Right. So just like a car has an engine, you know, just like that, you know, you have a mechanism inside of your body that, that the spokes of the wheel, they turn. Right. So when they, they operate like a lock, in, uh, like a, like the, that you have combination lock, it works just like that. So what happens with chakras is that there are seven main energetic hubs in your body where all your emotions are stored. So, yes, your emotions have a home inside of your body. The question is, where is that home and how deep it goes, right? That's the first thing. So what I found out, you know, uh, Lucky, is that when you, when you have these emotional homes, right, they're also uh, where majority of your nerves meet biologically. So physically speaking, you have your nerves meeting. Emotionally speaking, you have your internal mechanisms, emotional mechanisms, which sends out about 70,000 different signals in any one second. Like it, 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 so in order for you to be, you know, so uh, one of the things like uh, what interested me about your podcast is mental health, right? That it, it is so important that it, because all those signals, all those emotions, you know, turn into the, uh, the aspect of your physical life. And the chakras actually are those, uh, that hub in your body that affects everything else that you are doing. So that's what chakras are all about. And, um, you know, uh, but, uh, but I'm glad you asked me that question. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it's always something that I've, I've heard about. I mean, whether it be, I mean, we're starting to see a lot of, um, I watch a lot of anime and, you know, some more Eastern cartoons like that. And, uh, you know, I hear a lot about it in, in different forms, obviously in very cartoonish ways. But when you actually hear about it um, being practical, I think that's always when it starts to get a little bit better of a rap, right? Because a lot of times people think um, when you're hearing a, a hypothesis that coming forward, you're not hearing the, the theory, you're not hearing it being proven. Um, it sounds like you've been able to prove this quite a bit, but if we could uh, also step back a little bit, um, you had um, some other difficulties when you were, you were a little bit younger. Your mother was going through some, some postpartum uh, depression and all that kind of stuff, and then you were raised a little bit by your, by your grandfather. Could you explain kind of the importance and what your grandfather kind of gave to you um, that you're, you're still um, being able to apply today? Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, so, you know, I believe that family structure is important right and and i think my uh, since my mom went through postpartum depression uh, and my grandfather like he wasn't like my hero right? you know when when i was since i was a little and he actually um you know raised me to a good degree and same thing with my 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 grandmother so i grew up with my two aunts and and them pretty much to a good degree um and then so what 
what my grandfather gave me was balance, right? Because my grandfather was extremely balanced person. And I'm sure your listeners, you know, they have somebody in their life, just like I have. You just have to dig around and find a hero that you really believe in. It happens to be for me, it's my grandfather. So what happened, what transpired from that was that, you know, he actually was uh, a person that very thoughtful, very mindful, you know, somebody who was very uh, balanced. So he was like a hero for all of us, you know, especially like my, my brother and my sisters and everybody. Um, but for me, me being a first grandchild, obviously, you know, that that kind of uh, you know, helped out, I would say, to some degree. Uh, it, it has it has its perks. Uh, but, you know, we would talk about like, you know, uh, spirituality and uh, and religion. And we will talk about, um, you know, yoga and meditation and chakras and family and business. And I mean, you pretty much know it. And I, I went to him to for advice and for help. And uh, he left behind so many great things that I can't even tell you. Like, you know, he, and he helped me out in all aspects of the life. And when I went through some tough times, you know, especially um, how financial chakra got started, I was scammed, lost about a quarter million dollars. And um, that really hurt me because when you are, you work, everybody works hard, right? For their family and things of that nature, there's no problem. But when you work hard and then somebody scams you, you know, it really hurts you emotionally. And that hurt me really badly. And um, when I, uh, I, I'm an introverted guy, so I didn't really talk to anybody about it, but I decided to talk to my grandfather about it. And when I did, and when we had the conversation, he helped me my, with my chakras and alignment and all this. And once he aligned all that, um, you know, that's when I asked him a question. I said, has anybody proven how chakras could be applied in finances and he, or, or how could that be a rule that we could make? And he's like, that has never been done because it's now practical, right? Like it's real. So what I ended up doing was I, I, I ended up working with him and we did seven chakras and we took combinations of them and we did over 5,000 plus combinations. And for the first time I can show you what chakra exists in which money energy, whether it's a uh, savings or investing or whatever else that may be. Now, granted, having a financial background helped me because I understand financial instruments really well. But, you know, that was just a, uh, let's, let's just say it was icing on the cake. And that was a gift from him. And everything that I'm discussing with you today is actually a gift from him, but it actually gift uh, my tribute to him. You know, it, it's, a, it's my way of giving back. He passed away four years ago and I, we all miss him dearly. But, you know, he's here in the spirits. I actually have his, um, I, I kept all his uh, writings that he did from like all the Vedic texts and stuff like that, which I plan to read at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's that's tremendous. I think that's just so important. I think that's such a great, um, it's such a great, great um, example of, of what having kids really means, right? It, it, it almost is like immortality and, and to a certain degree, of course. I mean, obviously different religions believe in different things, whether it be reincarnation, all that kind of stuff. But that memory will, will be living on and it will be cultivated through, through his children, obviously through you as well. And I think that's such a, such a great thing. And I think uh, another great thing that you talk about is um, this idea of removing greed from your motivations for, for money. And you talk about kind of being in service. Could you talk about how people, because it's such an easy thing to fall into when you think about money. You, you think about money and you're just like, I want more of it. I want more of it. But a lot of people don't think about why they want more of it, what they're using it for, a lot of that stuff. How do you get people to uh, think, uh, to kind of flip the switch, so to speak, or to uh, change their motivations for attaining money and, and, and uh, doing um, and having a financial success? Yeah, and, and I think that so so it, it all goes on belief system, right? So you mean when we talk about like mental health, right? So many times people talk about money. As a, as a polluted energy, that, and they think it's, it's pollution, pollution to some degree. But in all reality, you know, accumulation of money is all the good deeds you have done in the in the world. So, you know, in many ways, like, you know, how much good deed have you done? It's a more of a measurement, right? So, you know, so your emotions can be like for the first time in financial chakras, I have developed a way for you to measure your emotions in dollars. So you can measure your potential in dollars, but now for the first time, you can also measure your emotions in dollars, right? So the question is, is that, you know, how is this, uh, you know, better for everybody? And, you know, why alignment is so important? Because... See, many times what happens is we are going after prosperity, you know, all the time. And we want to do more and more and more and more and more. And we want to achieve more. But what we forget 
is that so like for instance if you take a look at anything or anything that gets sold you know think of um they they look at the uh, as uh, us as a people we want more and people uh, who are selling products and selling services know that piece so what tends to happen is that we are being targeted like you know constantly targeted right to, to and they are appealing to those emotions and what's happening internally is that as they are appealing to those emotions they are going up and down our chakras they know exactly what what buttons to push you know to really make it work what i found with people who are prosperous and really satisfied and 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 being aligned one of the things i find is that the rules that you make for your life are so important you have to make your own rules so just like rich people you know one of the things they have is they have rules of making decisions on whatever they may be doing so what is that rule i will like if somebody offers me this i will act this way right and you may want to go back to the past because you cannot obtain prosperity without peace so the if you want prosperity and happiness you have to begin with peace so prosperity and happiness follows peace peace never follows prosperity and happiness it never works that way so the first question you have to answer is do you re- uh, what are you really following you know happiness prosperity or peace and that's lies your answer as to what you should be really doing you know in many ways and i think that there is such a center point you know peace is such a center point i was talking to somebody earlier today and they were you know they like a, uh, they started working with me about a year ago and they kept on following prosperity because and they kept on making these moves in the in the stock market and i'm like okay so first ask yourself who are you who am i and if you don't ask who am i because you come from one particular uh you know energy or chakra right and if you look at that who am i am i a risky person am i a safe person am i am i uh you know am i a conservative person am i uh, am i the kind of person who gets attracted to consistent and if you go back and look at some things that has really worked for you and look at some things that hasn't worked for you that will give you the lot of the clues and the answers that you're looking for why what's happening with you Yeah, that's such a great answer. I think it reminds me a lot of of in mental health we use boundaries, right? We in order to make decisions, we uh sometimes when we're interacting with certain people, we have to put up boundaries in order to make it um a, a good um you know, a good for good for me and good for them as well so that we don't feel like we're getting taken advantage of, that way they don't feel like they're getting taken advantage of. I think that's such a great um such such a great um a message and i think um you know you you talk you talk a lot about about balance could you kind of define what balance means because usually when we think of balance a lot of times people use that as like oh we have to be like completely good right but it seems like balance is 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 good and 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 bad like kind of, and in balance exactly like a scale could like could you uh, define what balance means to you so i think that balance comes in different forms right so first form that balance comes in is that Okay people use balance as an excuse so the question is is there an excuse or is that really a so like for instance I'll give you my example let's say that you know I, when I was you know going when I came here with 20 bucks and no english right in in reality I mean I was working okay I started my job in the morning well I'll go to school in the morning now I we used to live at my aunt's house and my mom and dad lived at my other aunt's house right so it was a it was a split up of the family to some degree and then we but because but we needed to survive we needed to make sure things that will happen so at that time i would work from i would go to school in the morning i would come home i would before and i would go start start walking straight to my job and i would used to work like uh, two, two or three miles away and i would walk to school i mean to work and i would work at this gas station work for until about 10 12 at night i would do all my homework there i would and then i would walk back home right so you know i mean it's so question is what's my balance at that time you know you know so the 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 reality of the matter was i would do this monday through thursday and then on fridays i would pull off shifts from at my work i would work from like um 3 in the afternoon to next morning you know uh, early early morning so i would pull off like good you know 24 hour shifts sometimes right um so at that time for us balance was making sure that my our family was okay because we had no money right? like literally we you, you could take uh, uh, my 
my what, what do you call this? My pockets out, and there was no money, right? If that was the illustration, I would make that. But but but, but that was the issue. But that, at that time, the balance was, you know, for us to make sure that we were set. And in one year, you know, by doing it this way, we, in one year we bought a house. So you know, after coming to United States, right? So it's September eighty fourth, nineteen eighty nine, we came here, and in nineteen ninety, we had a house. So like so. It's a relative, and I think people use it as an excuse versus a, a, a reality. So, okay, you may have to hustle for a little bit. Maybe you're working hard, but that's your balancing point right now. It's not going to be that way forever, right? Eventually, when things got better, I mean, we, we settled in, we got into the house, we, we, we were making good money, and, and we, we did what we had to do initially, right? So, um, you know, now you see me in this, with financial chakras background and it's all you know serene and all these things right but at the at the end of the day that gave us peace that gave us peace the hard work the dedication you know yes we were out of whack to some degree but to, to a good degree we were in balance because we knew that where we were headed was completely clear that we have to make it and for us that was balance back then today you know uh, balance is somewhat similar but not the same right because you know um uh, now we've been here for some time and my family and my my parents and all of us are pretty well but you know uh, it depends on the time of life i think you know it's not uh, uh, it's not this let me just sit back relax and things will fall on my lap that's not how it's gonna work i'm sorry but yes i would say do you can do yoga and we can do meditation and we can we can apply different things like for you know um that that we can really benefit from um but at the same time we have to be clear on what we want and the balance is where you are going the, for that time it doesn't have to be forever but for that time right and then eventually you'll find the balance you know but it's a journey. I yeah, think. no, that's such a great point. I think that's a good point, you know, bringing it back to, to mental health as well. It does make a, a, like, you know, somebody that is severely depressed might not do the same things that a severely like, manic person is, right? You know, a manic person um, is kind of suffering from delusions and all that kind of stuff. And so they have a very different balance point than somebody that's depressed and, you know, somebody that's anxious and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I think that's such a such an important point to kind of realize where the balance in your life really is because um, I, I feel like uh, balance in a lot of ways, it really, it really, like you said, it really depends on your situation, right? If you're extremely poor, then obviously you're going to have to do certain things. And then if you're extremely rich, you're going to have to do certain things to keep yourself in balance to make sure you don't get taken away with either side. And, to, you know, coming back to, to what you were talking about, about, you know, literally having nothing in your pockets and coming here with $20, did um, coming up from nothing give you an appreciation for the things that you have today because sometimes I feel like when people sometimes when people get money um sometimes when they get money too quick um whether you look at Conor McGregor like you know some of these very financially successful people they end up spending it so soon they end up spending it on big cars all that kind of stuff has uh has coming up from nothing really uh you know uh, heightened your uh appreciation for the things that you have in life yeah, I mean, I think in, in many ways, like, you know, my, my, my dad, you know, when, when even back home, he was a government worker and he was, uh, he was, he, we came from a middle, uh, middle class family, right? So when you take a look at like, you know, my grandfather had a, a you know, pretty good, uh, pretty good footing uh, per se. Uh, but as a family, we were in the middle class range. And then when we came here with nothing, like my dad had to sell everything. So the, the scenario was that my dad was working for this government job and then, we were living in a government quarters, you know, the back back there, right? So, and then right when we were coming here, so in 1981, my aunt applied for us. In 1989, when we got the visa. Well, ironically, right at 1989 is when government offered us a plot, a, a land, where they were going to build us a house. And that house was going to be about 100,000 rupees, right, back, back home. Now, for us, it was everything because... My dad's like, that's what I have saved, and it is perfect. But at the same time, he had to make a decision to buy the plane ticket to come here. So either he was going to take that money and spend it for a plane ticket, or he was going to take that money and, and buy the house. One of the two, right? And we chose to come here. 
And when we came here, we literally had nothing, right? So I think it, that has a lot to do with, you know, you know, being being humble because at the at the same time we also knew how big an opportunity we have here, is you know. So I think that uh, people who come to money, you know, all of a sudden what happens is many times it comes from the wrong energetic center and what happens is because it came from the wrong energetic center to begin with it depletes just as fast because they don't know how to balance it yeah that's such a, a great point and you had mentioned um you know I, I didn't know too much about chakras before coming into this and i still don't know a, a huge amount but um from a little bit of what i was looking into one one particular chakra um you know center was was really it kind of stood out to me and it was uh the root chakra or the uh maladhara yeah. chakra mm -hmm. and yeah. i i think it's just because it, it seems like if that's just out of whack it just seems like everything else goes out of whack but is that actually how chakra works is it like when it, it like let's say you're you does it start from the bottom and then it goes up and so if one of those passageways are blocked then it can't go to the rest of it or can it go for a certain amount and then you know be blocked at some point like how how exactly does um getting a chakra away blocked um end up affecting the rest of your system yeah so basically think of like your all of your emotions that you have there's a place for it in your body it's a it's a home for it right so muladhar chakra the first chakra right it, it is a um one of the components where you have the you have things like fear, anxiety, uncertainty, greed, lust, you know, uh, certain, like all that kind of resides there. Then the second, so then they go up, right? So think of them as like a lock. If one is blocked, the second is not open, right? So it's like, think of your, your lock at your, uh, at, in your locker room, right? If you don't put the right combination, it's not going to open. It's the same thing here, right? Except you have uh, nadis, which are your, your energy channels, which are going up and down. And what happens with many times when people are blocked, what happens is that not only they don't know their primary chakra, where they come from and who, where, who they are as a person. Our first question answered is who am I, right? Some people are great with certain, um, uh, you know, certain chakras because that's what they're born with. That's who they are. That's not something they can deny. That's first thing. The second thing that I find is that energies are flowing in a certain way for you. So like if you're in a habitual pattern where, you know, I was talking to a client like, like about a, uh, literally started about a week ago and their habitual pattern was they would get money, they would lose it. They would get money, they would lose it. They would get money and they would lose it more. So like, you know, there, there was a cons constant pattern, but it was part of the reasoning because of their chakras were not in proper alignment. And when that's not happening, you constantly fall into a pattern. The question is, what is that pattern? What chakras are opening? What chakras are closing? And that's what financial chakras really is all about, really to help you, you know, hone in on this and really fix your situations. But that's what, you know, this is all about. But yeah, you're right. That Muladhar chakra is one of them that has a big, big role in this. Yeah. And I think that's such a, a great point. I think that's why I, I always tell people, you know, no matter what, background you come from no matter what religion religious background you come from you should still study the other ones because there's just so much richness in different in, in diversity of thought and and there's so many different um ways to kind of um learn about the world and you really can't just learn about it from from one lens and i think that's such a a powerful uh powerful message and you you'd kind of alluded to something right there is is knowing yourself how how important is authenticity or, or knowing who you are in making a lot of these decisions because i feel like that's also something we learn in therapy right you try and you have this private place where you talk to a therapist you end up talking that person without judgment so that you can um you know you can kind of uh, express yourself in a very authentic way so that you're not uh you don't have the outside forces and then once you get outside you can start practicing trying to get that authentic self out but how 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 is um how important is that to your clients and you know maybe people looking to uh, better their financial gains so it is 1000 percent important because that's what determines like you know i, I talked about one of the things I have discovered is, uh, and I created a mathematical formula, just so you know, uh, for this, and how to measure your potential in dollars, right? And how to measure your emotions in dollars. And what I find is that because if you don't know who you are, you can't go, it's, it, so what I found is no matter what chakra you come from, what energy center you belong to, you know, at the end of the day, you can move your life forward much faster 
if you know your primary center. So the mistake that I find that people make is that they constantly look at what am I not good at. So like when they go to therapist, the 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 the, the answer is the therapist is trying to, and I'm not knocking therapists, I think they're fantastic and I've met some amazing, I actually serve a lot of wellness centers that, that have therapists and they're fantastic. But what I find in the world, when you go to your, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the therapists who are your family members, not the therapists who are actual therapists, okay? So, but that being said, you know, um, so when you go to them, what you find is that they constantly find your flaws. What I find is that when you when you know who you are and you you keep trying to make that stronger and make it like a rock you will you will go much further faster because the only thing you need to do at that point once you strengthen what you are already good at and you operate from that center and you come authentically you know from that center right the rest of the centers begin to fall into play but more importantly you don't have to correct them you just have to get them balanced so what I, what, that, that is the key to the, your primary chakra. Like it is absolutely imperative that you know what that is. Yeah, that was, uh, I had my mic on mute, but oh man, that is, uh, that's some really good stuff because I think, I think that's such a, a great thing that, that goes throughout life. You know, I used to do um, MMA and boxing, that kind of stuff. And one of the, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was, you know, don't focus on what you're bad at, focus on what you're good at. So that you can build your game around that. Like if you're a striker, if you if you're good in boxing, try not to get taken down. So you can you can accentuate what you're good at and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's such a, a great uh, idea. And you know, uh, coming from a little bit more of a mixed martial arts background, you know, you hear about people. You know, sometimes people will say, you know, they'll ask a, a fighter, you know, so what are you what are you worried about from this other person? They they always say, you know, I'm not worried about anything. I'm focusing on myself. And I think that's such a a, a great and, and really um really powerful message. And I think I, I think it's just uh you know a lot of uh, all everything that you say. I mean, I've watched uh, some of your videos and and kind of read into you a little bit. And it, it it's such an important um all of these are really just important points. For, for life, if you think about it, you know, I, it almost sounds like you're building this foundation so that you can build up, um, you know, build up your, your legacy, build up your, you know, what, whatever you want to call it. But um, could you talk about the importance of, of, of building yourself up so that you can help others? Because you do, a, you give a great example of, you know, if a, if a glass is empty, you know, you can't serve anybody with that, right? So it needs to be overflowing. Could you kind of talk about the importance of, of working on yourself so that you can be of service to others? Absolutely. So, so I'll give you an example, right? You know, I, I work with a lot of a lot of people, and one of the things, uh, one of the people that came to me, um, you know, so they were, you know, they, they came from a mentality of like, you know, fake it till you make it, right? So, and that was the mentality or the thought process that they had. Now, the issue was that they were actually in the business of helping other people. That's what their business was, right? And they were trying to help them do A, B, C, or X, Y, Z, right? So I think as a human beings, whatever we've been through, we want to help other people not make that mistake. And that's the goodness and kindness that we have from our heart. And we want to do that. But if you're not fully healed, how are we going to do that? Because it's like saying, you know, my foot is broken, but I'm going to get up and run and help you out, right? Like you just can't do that. Like it's, you know, when a plane is falling down, you got to put the mask on first. So it's just the way it works, right? It's not something good or bad, or it just is. So I believe that when you are in life overflowing, right? I mean, you know, so, you know, you, you are able to make a, such a big impact. I'm not saying that you cannot make an impact if you're not overflowing, but the impact that you make when you are overflowing is completely different than the impact that you are able to make when you are not overflowing. Because somewhere along the line, you know, there is a, there is a uh, missing components that doesn't allow you to live your life fully, right? And you can't, you can't show up authentically and say, you know, uh, like I told your, uh, your listeners that I love you guys, right? And you can't do that if you are not coming from an authentic place. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, you no, know, I think I think that's such a great a great point because it, it, it reminds me of I've talked about this a lot as about like support systems in, in mental health, right? If somebody's supporting you, it's also very important for them to get mental like to make sure that their mental health is, is in sync too. It's not just about you because the last thing you need is 
is this mental illness spreading on to other people, right? Because that that's that's the the big thing. And in order to become a strong pillar, you can't have cracks in it, right? Or else the roof will fall down. And so I think that's such a such a great point. I mean, how do you um how do you end up staying balanced, being as you know as busy and as, as successful as you are? Because I think that is kind of you know sometimes it can be kind of easy to I don't want to say easy, but maybe a little bit uh, there's less obstacles in your way when you are your schedule is open, you have a little bit more freedom to do things, but you seem like a very busy man, very um, successful man. How do you kind of stay balanced um, throughout this whole, um, this whole adventure that you have? Yeah, and, and so balance is, like I was you know, explaining before, right? Balance is, is relative. So the question is, is that what's balanced? I mean, I have a, I, I, I have a uh, you know, daughter, I have a wife, you know, uh, even, a, even a little dog, his name is Teddy, he's Shizu. Uh, you know, so that being said, you know, like, and, and then of course, I, you know, I have a full blown family. My parents are local and, you know, so what I find is that in terms of your life is concerned, right? What, what is it that you really love to do? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? And my main mission is to really make a difference in other people's lives. And that being the, the ultimate goal, the balance beam for me, you know, I am more happy when I'm done for the day. And I, and I, when I go to bed at night, I am such a, at a peaceful sleep. You know, I mean, my wife tells me that you go, you come to bed and you go to sleep in less than five minutes. I mean, I'm, I'm, as soon as I close my eyes, I'm knocked out. Right. For, for me, that is so, such a joy because I, I just, poof, I'm gone. Like it literally gone, you know? So uh, I think it's important to stay in that blissful state because for me, that's my peace, uh, my Zen zone, knowing that I have helped so many people throughout the day, you know, like I took this uh, lady, you know, uh, that I was talking to this, this husband, wife that I was talking to, I mean, they went from a negative situation to saving $2,500 a month in less than a week. I think that's a, to, for me, that's peaceful and that's a balance. You know, if I hadn't done that, that would be a problem. Yeah. But, I, I, you know. Yeah. I think that's such a great, that's such a great point, right? Because, you know, we, we talk about you know, we talk about in life, you know, if, if uh, you can't sleep at night, you know, there might be something wrong, right? Because obviously there's, quote unquote, you know, demons in your head and all that kind of stuff, like, things haunting you. Um, and keeping a clear conscious is very, very key. And I, I really like that expression of it. Now, I, I had a, you know, a little bit more of a theological question in, in, in terms of, uh, you know, um, Hinduism in particular, because I remember hearing when I was in philosophy class, I was a philosophy major before I dropped out of college. And um, one of the most um, kind of mind blowing quotes I've ever heard, I think it was from Jean Paul Sartre, but somebody had ended up saying, um, you know, the way that you view life is the, or the way you that you live life is the way that you view death. Well, if you view death in a, in, in a reincarnation type of sense, is does that um, change the way that you live your life? Or is there um, is there a different uh, or does that really not play as much of a bearing in in, um, in decision making? Yeah, so like let's talk about reincarnation, right? So reincarnation, we believe that there are, uh, I believe, on the planet, I believe there are about eight million different, um, you know, species, right? So reincarnation, you know, in Hinduism, the way it's talked about is like whatever you do, your your deeds today will help you. So the goal of this human journey is to become human again. Right, that is a that is the journey of the reincarnation, but you know you could end up you know based on your deeds you'll end up as a you know uh, another being. Now you know for for me you know like personally speaking, uh, it for me is what is about is I really just want to uh, honestly um, death is like you know it doesn't really bother me like you know I know that one day I'm gonna go. Um, and, and that's that. And if I'm going to, you know, however I come back, whatever form I take, I just want to make sure that I do the best I can in this lifetime so I don't have to suffer. Because if the reincarnation is reality, right, which some people may or may not believe, in my case, I believe, but in other people may or may not believe, and that's irrelevant. But imagine you were giving on a second chance, right? What type of second chance would you like to have? in a nirvanic state or something else? And if the answer is nirvanic state, then why not do things that is gonna make you completely happy, your soul fulfilled, and making sure that you can make a difference coming from the center place versus just, 
you know, uh, trying to live the life like everybody else lives, which is, um, you know, rat race, honestly, you know? Yeah, no, and I mean, so... I, think that, I think that's such a, a great point because, you know, sometimes um, even in, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. So even in Christianity, sometimes I hear some Christians say, you know, oh, you know, make sure that you just believe in Jesus and you'll be able to make it. Um, and sometimes I think that's a very problematic way of looking at it because then you, it almost seems like you can do whatever you want in this life as long as you can make it to heaven, as long as you follow like certain principles. And I think that's such a, a great point because there are still consequences for you if you do reincarnate right if you have if you end up uh um you know doing doing bad stuff during this life and i think that's such a great point i mean how um you know you had you had kind of uh you know you, you guys had kind of approached me for this interview and I, I was very surprised but um how important do you think mental health is in the the reality of things because obviously i talk a lot about physical health spiritual health mental health um, and you know, you just brought in a new kind of form that I'm going to start implementing a little bit more as financial, um, you know, financial well-being and all that stuff. But how important is mental health in in all of these um, in either your clients or you know people that are struggling financially? So I'll tell you, like you know, mental health is is so crucial because it's what your belief system is, right? At the end of the day, like you, if you're not living as an authentic self, if you're not being that example for yourself. How can you be example for others? Like, you know, you want to make a difference in your life. You want to influence your kids or your family or, or, your, or your neighbors or all these people, right? But the one person that matters the most, you haven't taken the time to influence, which is yourself. So, you know, like at the end of the day, have you, are you your best advisor? Are you your best um what do you call this uh not uh, a mentor right and, and and do you love yourself right i mean i would challenge your your uh, listeners to actually um you know uh, put on my on my linkedin or something you know how would you kiss your brain right so if you if you can figure it out you know without anything you you have to kiss your brain with your mouth and i, I would love to know get some pictures on that but you know, you have to love yourself. And my, you know, my wife tells me all the time, you're full of yourself. I'm, I'm like, you're right. I am because I got, I got my body. I got my mind. I got my spirit and I love myself. Right. So, I mean, like I am my best mentor. The question is, who is your best mentor? And if you are not a best mentor to yourself, how can you be a best mentor for somebody else? Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's, that's such a, a great point because one of the first things I learned when I was in the uh, when I first went to the the psych ward and we did some inpatient stuff um, in the facility was um, you know people were they would ask us you know how much time do you um, take out for yourself to actually think about what you want to do in life to you know what fulfills you you know that kind of thing not just um, empty fulfillment like you know substances and abusing those kind of types of things or anything like that but actually what fulfills you and I I. It's funny, a lot of the common theme was a lot of us had never thought about it. We always thought there were a lot of people that were helpers in the group, so they always help people first. They you know, you mentioned the the, the the mask when it comes down in the airplane, right? You do have to put it on your on yourself first before you can help others, right? Um, and I think that's such a such a, a crucial thing because we have it I don't know if it's it's a cultural thing or anything like that. Maybe it's just um, just comes from a, a certain place, but sometimes we, we do tend to think of uh, self loving self uh, fulfillment in a, in a selfish way but even if it is it's not without its benefits to others right it's not without its um it's not without its um its uh, selflessness um as selfless uh, goals uh, to go forward and i i really I, you know i i have to say Ash, i i was really um thankful that i i said yes to this interview because my social anxiety kicked in um probably right when you guys had messaged me about this and then i had a uh, winter snowstorm here in texas so i ended up pushing it even further and uh it was it, it was it was really rough on me because i was just trying to think you know what what is what does money have to do with mental health i don't get it and as i hear you speak now as i've um heard you talk um in your youtube videos which i'll um i introduced in my intro video before this but it's such a crucial part of life if you want to think of money as just resources right i mean without resources it's very hard to live a fulfilling life and you know um ash this is usually my, my final question to everybody but could you give your message out to the people that are dealing either with financial difficulty that are 
maybe are, maybe came from a similar boat from you, maybe are, are um, have immigrated here and just they don't know where to go or anything like that. I mean, what would your message be out there to, the, to my listeners and to people that have come from the, from similar backgrounds? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I would like to tell them that, you know, if uh, if they, um, you know, are looking for something, I want to let them know that I love you guys, you know, because I really want to make a difference in your life. And though, and you, uh, you believing in yourself is so important because at the end of the day, you know, first and foremost, you know, I would say, find yourself, go on a hunt to find yourself. Who am I? Answer that question. One of my things about my grandfather is he gave me that as an answer. He says, uh, son, you know, uh, grandson, you find yourself, find who am I? And once you know that answer, who am I, then you are able to do uh, change the world in ways that you have never thought about. Second thing that he t- taught me was do one thing and be fantastic at it, not just good at it or not just great at it, but fantastic at it, right? So, you know, so uh, that's the second advice I have. A third thing I, I've learned over time, and I learned this from, you know, several people, including my grandfather, was, you know, think of life as a linear uh, equation. So if this was a timeline that you are passing on, your emotions are, it's what was driving this, this timeline, right? Your emotions are taking you up and down. Now, the question is, you know, are you, is, does that mean that today you are, you know, 25 years old and tomorrow you'll be 35 years old? No, tomorrow you'll be 25 years old in one day right? That's how old you'll be. So the question is, in your timeline of life, if you figure out exactly what it is that you want to do, you want to find out who am I, right? And you know that you are a difference maker. Maybe you are, you are a mom, you are a dad, you know, who wants to be a great example. The question to yourself is, are you doing the things on that day to make the biggest difference in that fashion, whether you're a mom or a dad, right? If you are a business owner and you're trying to grow your business, right? Okay, are you doing all the things in the right way, right? Are you doing things in a polluted? Because what happens is, it's a life is a is a is a, either an addition a, or a subtraction, right? And it equals to multiplication. So if you take a look at an addition of emotions, like when you add, live by yourself who you are, you understand who you are and you live authentically, you keep making additions. Every time you subtract, right, what happens is, is, is you are actually going negative, just like in a financial world, if the stock goes down by 50%, you actually have to do 100% to break even. So it's the same thing in life, in emotional, you know, uh, in emotional uh, market, right, you are actually, when you go down, you don't go down by a little bit. You go down by so much, and then it takes so much time to come back up. And what you learned from people is that, oh, you're in a hole, no problem. Dig, dig a deeper hole and you'll get out. I mean, ask yourself this question. If you're in a 10-foot hole and you're trying to get out and you make that hole 12 foot deep, will you get out? <laughs> and if the answer is no to that, don't do that, right? You know. So start making smart choices, right? Smart, start taking uh, good moves, right? Balance is relevant, is relative to what you're trying to accomplish. What do you, tr- what are you trying to do? You know, maybe you have a you know, few kids and all of a sudden you're trying to find balance, right? And you're trying to go in this Zen zone in your house in COVID. Well, I got news for you. You probably are not going to go in that Zen zone, but if you really love your family, you are balanced. Right. So it's relative. Right. So to, to to what you're looking at. So I would say, look at your life, my friends, and go one step at a time. Keep going forward. Have faith. Make sure you pray every day. OK. So one thing I would say is when you wake up in the morning, you take a shower. The reason you do that is because first you, you, you are sleeping. You have all these bad thoughts, bad dreams that we have to, you know, uh, 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 we have to undo. But on top of that, on there are bad bugs and stuff like that on your body. So when you bathe in the morning, in Hinduism, we believe this. So when you take a bathe, a bathe in the morning, first you are bathing your body. But then if you go out right after that and you start doing prayers, right, you can have so many things come in your life. Whether you pray to Jesus or whether you pray to Buddha or whether you pray to Hindu gods or whatever that may be. Okay. But if you do prayers, now you're cleansing your mind. 
if you do that little exercise that I'm just giving you, my friend, your life will become balanced automatically. You know, just a simple exercise you can do every morning. And if you practice that every single morning, you know, maybe you do some mantras, you know, you create mantras around money, right? Maybe you create mantras around your life. Maybe you create, you know, some rituals that you can, you guys can follow as a family or as a, as a, as a friends, you know, or in business or whatever that may be. And when you do that, but you do that after you take shower in the morning, you go pray to God, you know, find a corner. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be a, a room in the house, just a corner where you can go and put your hands together and say, thank you, God, for this day today being a fantastic day and I really appreciate you and I love you and I want to just give you a hug if you were here, right? And and just begin prayers in the right way and my friends, your life can change just like that, you know? And that is my, my, my wish and my prayer today for all of you to prosper beyond your belief. That is my goal. Absolutely. At Financial Chakras, I love you guys and I cannot wait to have a conversation with you. Yes. Day. Yes. And uh, thank you again, Ash. And uh, once again, I, I did. And uh, I will say this during my intro video, but uh, you guys can check out Financial Chakras and Sell Like Crazy on Amazon. I'll have the links for all those um, in the description box down below, whether you're listening on podcasts or you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, once again, Ash, I, I really do appreciate this. This was uh, a very enlightening interview. And uh, I also suggest anybody that is a fan of my work to, to look at um, Ash's YouTube channel if, if maybe you're financially struggling and um, you know, maybe you, for some reason you can't afford the books and you can, yeah, which they're not very expensive anyway, but, um, you know, you can always check out his YouTube channel. There's a wealth of information, you know, no pun intended. There's a wealth of information on there, um, about a lot of this stuff and, um, about bringing wholeness to your life. And, um, yeah, Ash, I, I really do appreciate your, your insights. And, uh, you know, I can definitely tell that you have a lot of experience with, with not just finances, not just spirituality, but with life. And I think that's, um, that's just something that's irreplaceable. So I really appreciate you bringing all of that energy, bringing all of that, um, those experiences to my channel, to my listeners. And uh, yeah, once again, I just want to thank you. Thank you, my friend. You know, uh, lucky as I, I am so thankful to, to you know, let you, you know, like help me do this interview. I really appreciate that. Your questions were phenomenal. And I want to thank, you know, all the listeners who are listening and tell them that I really appreciate you guys as well. And uh, if I can help anybody in any way, shape or form, Feel free to reach out. Hey guys, thanks for watching Mental Health Casual. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos.